Welcome to the junk drawer of the boat, which is also known as my office or the storage area. So, in part one, if you recall, we went over how to disassemble and begin to sand the butterfly hatch. In this episode, my intent was to cover the um, varnishing, preparing for varnish, and the reassembly. I think we're only going to get the um, the preparing for varnish and the first part of the varnishing done, not necessarily the reassembly. All right, we've sanded everything down with 150 and then finished it off with 220. In a couple places, I had to revert all the way back to 100 to get it right down to the wood. But uh, get it now. I'll smooth that at 220. We'll um, go ahead and wipe it down with either acetone on a rag or a paint thinner, and then we will start our first thin coat of varnish. I set up a small workspace in the grassy area just off the dock and took all of the parts over to this particular table. You'll notice I'm using um, a paint thinner here on a clean white um, cotton rag and the first step really is to get all the sanding dust off of all of these um, these pieces of wood. We want the surface to be really clean before we, before we ultimately um, start the varnish process. As a reminder from the first episode, we went ahead and sanded these units all the way down to the bare wood. Uh, in most cases we started with 150 grit and a couple of places we went down to 100 grit to get some really um, caked on epoxy off and then we worked our way up to 220 grit. Um, we were using an orbital sander and we had a uh, vacuum or dust collector connected to it to reduce the amount of sawdust that ended up blowing around. But you'll notice we flipped the unit over and now we're wiping the other sides of both of the hatches as well. Once all of the pieces were thoroughly wiped and dried with the paint thinner, it was now time to prepare the varnish for our first coat. So the very first coat, what you really want to do is make sure that the varnish um, penetrates into the wood fairly good to seal up some of the pores and ultimately uh, create a nice smooth surface that the rest of the varnish will ultimately layer on top of. So what we did was, um, it's, it's, always, it's always important, you don't want to, you know, actually I guess you chase your, your paint bucket around on a windy day. Um, but you never want to shake the varnish can either. So you'll notice I opened up the can and I'm using a paint stirrer to mix it. The reason you do that is you're trying to avoid getting air bubbles into the can itself. Shaking it like you would paint would create a lot of air bubbles that ultimately end up in the surface of the material. So this part of the advice is going to be rather controversial or at least debatable by anybody that does varnish. So understand that there's variations of this and everybody does it slightly differently. I think there's a few things that anybody that does good varnish on would agree, and that is one, you never want to dip your brush into the actual varnish can, you really want to use a different vessel for it. So you'll notice here I poured some of the varnish into a small plastic container that I'm going to utilize to, um, to actually do my varnishing. Most people would actually put this in an empty paint can um, that's just used for dipping the brush in. Uh, I just find it a little easier to use the plastic cup, especially given that I'm only mixing up enough to be used right away. The next step is actually the thinning of the varnish. And because this is the first coat, I like to actually thin mine by about 25%. So that's three part varnish to one part paint thinner. It's best to utilize the same manufacturer's paint thinner that manufactures the varnish. I know all the, all the varnish manufacturers will recommend that. Um, I don't always do that in, in the spirit of all openness, but um, that is what the manufacturer recommends. So again, the furry first coat is 25% thinner and 75% varnish. And again, you want to mix it with a stir stick and you're trying to avoid getting air bubbles in it. And the reason for this is you're going to get deep penetration because it's much thinner. It's going to penetrate into the pores. It tends to also dry quicker. So when I do my first few coats, I usually use a foam brush or a small chip brush, just because it's a lot easier to just throw these things away, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to improve the surface as I get to later coats. So you'll notice the way I'm doing this. I start with a fairly small amount of varnish on the chip brush. Um, I layer it on a little bit at a time just to cover an area, and then you'll notice I'll start running longer, gentle strokes um, all the way across the material. Not only the section I just varnished, but the, uh, the next section as well. So again, you'll notice here, it's, this is the third sort of segment, if you will, that I've applied some varnish on, and the purpose is just to cover the material. A lot of people will also recommend that you apply the varnish across the grain when you're first putting it on, and then blend it or run it um, back and forth with the grain to smooth it out. Um, I actually tend to do this with the grain more so than across, but that is another very common approach to applying varnish. So again, now's the time when I'm starting to smooth this out. So you'll notice I'm making longer, gentler strokes across the entire material. 
and the purpose of that is to ensure good coverage and making sure there's not any um, rough spots or areas where the brush strokes are showing up uh, very heavily. You'll notice that regardless of the piece that we're working on, uh, I again blend this with the grain. So you saw me go back and forth on the small frame that uh, runs between the two glass panels and running that with the grain just like I am at this current flip phase in the video. Uh, when I get to the side panels, I'm going to run that lengthwise so it's also going with the grain. At this point, it's just a matter of repeating the process over and over. So be very cautious you don't touch the edge of the varnish. Uh, fingerprints will show up really bad inside a varnish, so it's just a matter of uh, continuing on. So after doing all the pieces, I worked out, went over to the deck of the boat and started working on the hatch frame itself. Um, at some point, as I was cleaning this off with paint thinner, I leaned on the edge of it and realized it was loose. Um, this was sort of one of those aha moments because um, I tell you what, if I can get this thing off of here, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to do all the sanding and varnishing um, rather than laying on my side the whole time like I did sanding it to get the varnish on there and make sure I don't get varnish on the deck. As you see, it popped off and I'm going to go take it out to the grass to do it there. There's a lot of things one could say about this, like, oh, look, it's in good shape, or, oh, look, no, it's not so much in good shape, or um, I guess now it'll be easier for me to build the frame around it, or whatever it is I have to say, but the reality is that sucker wasn't even bolted down to the boat. When I do my second coat, I actually thin that about 15% paint thinner and about 85% varnish so it's a little bit thicker and the only reason I do that is I'm trying not to go from a jump of 2575 all the way to straight varnish I'm just trying to build up another thin coat that penetrates any places I may have missed on the previous one um, as soon as I'm on the third coat I'm using full strength varnish and the reason I'm doing that is I'm wanting to build up my layers um, as thickly as I can um, as thickly and as quickly as I can really that's what gives the varnish that beautiful wood under glass look um, Ideally, for anything exterior, you want somewhere between 6 and 10 coats of varnish. Um, I like to settle somewhere around 6 or 7, uh, and then I look at it and decide if it looks rich enough for me, and then decide if I'm going to put a couple more on. The idea of doing it that thick is the maintenance every year becomes a little easier. You scuff it with a 3M scotch pad, and you add another coat or two of varnish, rather than having to strip it all the way back down. The maintenance becomes significantly easier than the job you're actually seeing us do here, where we went down to bare wood and starting to build up a surface from the beginning. So after getting the first coat of varnish on the uh, the butterfly hatch, I did that on the boat and then I actually carried all the pieces to our storage unit. I figured it would be a little bit easier to, um, to do it there, a little bit more of a controlled environment and honestly with less chance of, um, of bugs or dust or anything else um, coming in and bothering it. Uh, we had a chance of rain and I didn't want that to potentially impact or get the, the material wet so it kind of worked out well doing it that way. The best way to do this varnishing is if you can get your head low enough so that the sun is at a low angle, you can really see the, uh, the texture of each of the strokes, which is ultimately what you want. So you end up with a good even coat with no thick brush strokes, runs, or what they refer to as dry spots, which are holidays. Typically a holiday is going to happen if, you, uh, if your varnish is starting to set up a little bit and you no longer have a wet edge. It's kind of like um, like pulling something sticky along with you the whole time. Every time you run a brush stroke, it wants to follow and pull toward the brush. It really does not give it a good finish. So at this point, it's just a matter of repeating the process over and over. I'm putting on a nice thin coat. You'll notice I keep my head nice and low to keep checking for any um, texture or miss spots, or again, what they refer to as holidays, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and I want to put these coats on. Now it's important to know what the humidity and the temperature is where you are. Um, I always test this on a test piece of wood to see how long it's going to take to dry. Um, don't be tempted with trying to come back and put a second coat on before this is completely dry. Uh, it will certainly help you build up layers quicker, but unfortunately the thicker the varnish is, the gummier it becomes and the longer it takes to dry. So for example, I could have put probably put three coats of varnish on in, um, in a one or two day period, but then I would have such a thick coat of varnish on, it would potentially take four or five days for it to actually dry completely. And rather than drying as um, individual very hard, tough layers, instead it will harden more like a gummy substance. And if you've ever seen varnish where you can take um, your fingernail and push a little dent into it, that's usually because somebody put the varnish on a little too thick. 
uh, and it never was able to set up in those thin hard layers. Instead, it hardened as best it could with that thick, um, that thick texture through the whole thing. Well, that's about it for this particular video. We're going to um, we're going to stop here. Add a third part to this video, which is going to show kind of the completed product after we have a good six or eight good dried coats here, and then the reassembly in that next video as well. Now, one of the things I didn't plan for, and the reason this two-part series is likely going to turn into three, is um, Monday I, I started feeling a little bit sick, a little bit lightheaded, and just and thought maybe I was just coming down with a virus. Um, but about uh, 10 o'clock at night or so, um, I could feel my heart racing and I lost consciousness for a little bit. It was a little bit, a little bit scary. Um, I ran to the emergency room and uh, it turned out I had a little bit of a, an odd heart thing going on. Um, AFib, exactly what that is. It's basically a missed beating of the heart. Anyway, I was in the hospital for a few days. Uh, they got that fixed, recovered, back to its normal heartbeat. So it's got the rhythm it had before it all started. I feel great. Um, just a little bit of a scare and never something expected to be in the hospital for a few days. So, the good news is, I'm back and I feel great. Um, the bad news is, delayed my varnishing, doggone it. So, this will turn into a three-part series. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for weekly updates and like this video.